generation coming in that uh, uh, really doesn't have any loyalty to any particular party. Mm -hmm. Like it, it, have I started to answer my own question? Or, <laughs> like, like, because it is a problem. Yeah, it is. I mean, you, you've got certain writings that have been liberal forever, NDP forever, and and how do you break the mold when you're when you're um, trying to get people more aware of the issues when all they want to do is look at the color of your shirt? Yeah, that is a huge, 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 huge issue. Um, I think that the best thing is, uh, you know, how do you answer that? Boy, so that's tough. I know. I, that's I, a tough question. You can use social media to try and reach out to the younger voters because it's certainly not, you know, my grandmother and my grandfather that are going to be on Twitter. It's certainly not, you know, my mother well, and... Well, a lot of them are. Well, <laughs> well, hopefully, but I can tell you that from, from my particular case, it's certainly not the older folks of my family that are sitting there with a, a smartphone you know, checking their Twitter and their Facebook every 10 minutes, that's not them. Uh, that's the younger generation, right? And um, the, like you said, the younger generation don't seem to vote. They vote either with their feet or they're very apathetic and they don't know what the issues are. Um, which, you know, I tend to disagree with the, that, that comment has come back to me and I tend to disagree with that because I see the young liberals in Subria, which is a very active group, they know the issues. Uh, they're voting because they want to vote. I know one particular uh, girl whose father is very much an NDP -er. I mean, his, his house is even orange, uh, but yet she's liberal. Interesting dynamic, and, and when, you take, when you study marketing, what, what, there's, what a lot of the professional marketing companies are saying now is that the best way to get to the older generation is to communicate with the younger generation via the social mm -hmm. media and the technology because many of the many of the older uh, I'll use older because I'm in that category many of us that are in our 60s and 70s we ask for advice from our 30 and 40 year old mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. as to what they think we should be doing when you get to politics it's almost the reverse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where the parents seem to be telling the kids who to vote for mm -hmm and not listening to uh, the rationale and the reasons. And so can we get the younger people debating with their parents who have been lifelong NDPers and lifelong liberals and lifelong conservatives? Uh, will they, do they even have a chance to debate because many of the people in the older generation are voting that way because that's the way they've always voted and they don't really know what the issues are but that they've always put the same sign up on their lawn every year. Yeah. Um, how do you break that? Because it has to be an issue, it, 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 and it has to be something that is uh, not just dealing with Nickel Belt and Sudbury, but probably all the writings, mm -hmm. and, and, and at, at least the provincial and federal levels. It, it's, um, I guess it's got to be something that, uh, as a candidate, you're facing with. Because, uh, yeah, that, that is a great question, and you know, one of the bottom lines to me on that is, if you're going to talk about politics, especially at your family table, you have to have a level of respect. And I think we've lost that, to be honest with you. I think we all need to start respecting each other. I respect France Gilino immensely. I have a great admiration for France. I am not the person who's going to be mudslinging at France Gilino. I don't ever want to be heard saying anything negative about France Gilino. I, that's not the politics that I'm going to be playing. But I would love to debate with France. I would love to have a chance, even on this show, to sit down with France on a mutually respectable platform and say, here are the issues, let's talk. That's what's needed. And that's also needed at the supper table. So if you have opposing views, if you've got a liberal in an NDP family or an NDP or in a liberal family, you have to be able to respect the views. So daddy can't say to little Jimmy, okay, that's enough, you're voting NDP. Daddy's gonna have to have the respect to say, well, why do you think that? And flush that out. And little Jimmy has to have the same respect for daddy. Saying, well, why are you voting NDP, dad? If we had that level of respect, instead of slinging mud at each other, I bet you we'd be able to flush out a lot more. And bottom line, like I said earlier, your product is gonna be better. And that's the bottom line to me, is we have to find that common ground again, which we've lost. 
Now, you're talking to one of the older generation here. Um, it's the unfortunate thing about videotaping this, so you can't hide behind the, <laughs> the microphone. Um, so, but the, the, the difficulty is, and, and I, this is my perception, and I probably the perception of a lot of people, is that we're not sure if we're hearing James Tregani or if we're hearing the Liberal Party. And, and I think when you get into partisan politics, is it about the leaders or is it about the candidates? Yeah. Is it local or is it provincial? And you know what? I, this is what I firmly believe. All politics is local. You know, when I talk about infrastructure and $29 billion, yes, that's the provincial number. But we need to have it done here in Nicobel. We need better roads. We, we cannot continue driving up to Chemisford and going up to Onipane, dodging potholes every second, you know, driving at 40 or 20. We can't afford to do that anymore. We need to fix that area. All we need is a billion. Yeah. We don't need 29. All we need is one. But it's the same thing when we're talking healthcare. You know, we need to have prevention programs for concussions here in Sudbury. We need to wor start working on this. This is all about local politics. So, you know, are you listening to James or are you listening to Kathleen Wynn? When I'm talking here in Sudbury, when I'm talking here in Nickel Belt, I'm talking about local issues. My campaign based on infrastructure spending, senior care, and economic diversification, only to touch on a few, right? There's also health care and education. There's, there's all the other gamuts of it. But those three major points need to happen here in Nickel Belt. And you need to have somebody who's going to work hard to make sure it happens. You know, that's the one thing that I'm good at is performance measures. When I say something, it's going to get done. It may take me a few years, right, to chip away at the mountain, but it, uh, it'll get done. Because I'm a dog and a bone when it comes to stuff like that. Can, are we big enough in the north to be heard? Yes, we are big enough in the north to be heard. The problem is, and I say this out of very, I say this respectfully and not disrespectfully, but the northern seats belong to the NDP. What we need to do for a northern voice is ensure that we have a voice at the government table. We do with Mike Gravel, we do with Dave Orizetti. We have some pretty big ministers in cabinet right now that are from the north, but we, we need to resound that a lot better in government. You know, France has done a very good job at bringing forward issues in the house. She has, you know, chipped away at the mountain, but at the end of the day, she's still in opposition. She's not at the table where the decisions are being made, and that is the issue. So in order for the north to be heard, the North has to put the politics aside, put the fact that I voted NDP for the last 50 years, put that aside and say, what is best for our area right now? What is best for Valley East? What is best for Val Karen? What is best for Hanover? What is best for Coniston? What is best for Garson? What is best for Gogana? Who is the best person who will bring forth the issues to get me the results that I need? Because I need the results now. I don't need the results in 40 years. And in order to get that answer, it, it seems as if we're, because of the short time frame and the large geographical area, uh, we really have to rely on what the leaders are saying and, and what the press is reporting on the leaders because it's hard for you to get around to see enough people. Yeah. Um, so, and that's why it, and it wasn't anything against any of the individual candidates. It really does seem that the the news of the day is what the provincial leaders are saying and, and what they're being reported as, as saying. It's, uh, and it's up to us as candidates to bring that locally. So what Kathleen is saying regarding infrastructure, we have to bring that locally. You know, is transit an issue for us? Well, we don't have subways. We have roads. So yes, you know what? Transit is an issue for us. However, our transit issues are not building a subway. Our transit issues are fixing our roads. Otherwise, the transports can't get to Timmins, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to resound that, and that's the job of the candidate. So when you hear stuff like that kind of you know, infrastructure spending, and we're going to spend this and that and the other thing, call your candidate. Call us up. We have websites. You can email us. You can call us. We've got campaign offices. Drop in. Talk to us. And then you'll get the actual facts. Because you're right, we can't get to every door. We won't be able to. But we do have the social media, and we do have the emails. We have everything that you need to get a hold of us.
then you know the local issues. So, so your job as an individual candidate is to, to kind of uh, localize, localize the, yeah. the big issues. Yeah, yeah. Bring it down and say this is what is going to happen here in Nickel Belt, and this is what twenty nine billion dollars worth of infrastructure funding means to you. Right. That's a good point. Um, we're going to take a, a, a short break so that we can kind of sum up how uh, to finish this. We have about 15 minutes left in, in the interview. And um, when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll try to make sure we covered some things that we may have not had a chance to talk about yet because we're just kind of having a free-flowing conversation. But one of the main objectives, one of the main goals that uh, I was hoping for and, and is definitely happening is... Uh, we have a chance to find out a little bit more about James Tregani and, and uh, what some of the major issues are. And, and, and I think um, it's important that, like you say, we, we do start talking about these issues, but not from talking about, uh, you know, I've got this sign and I've always voted NDP, I'm not ever going to change, I've always voted Liberal, I'm never going to change, and so let's start fighting over whether the Canadians should win the Stanley Cup or the Leafs should win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> I can remember 1967, so um, maybe the next centennial. But, but I, I think it, in order to be open, I, I think there has to be a level of awareness. And, and, and these are some pretty important issues. And, and it's, it's, it's not, it's like the tip of the iceberg that the general population sees. It's, if you don't get a chance to see the, uh, the engineering blueprint yeah. to your house, you see the house. Yeah. Exactly. But it's that engineering design work that is uh, the important. most important. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll come back in, in, the, in about four or five minutes and we'll continue with uh, James Tregani on the Learning Clinic. I'm your host, Bob Kerwin. Don't go too far away because we're not going to be that long. We're only going to be about uh, three or four minutes and then we'll, we'll wrap this up with another 10 or 15 minutes to try and sum up a little bit um, uh, more of what... Um, is happening over the next four years in this provincial campaign. So stay with us, and uh, we'll be back in about uh, three or four minutes. So do you want in or not? What's that? You want in? Yeah, jump in. Okay. All right. Is there any chance I can get some water? It is so dry in here. I know. <clears throat> I don't. I didn't bring anything. Either. Um. It's not, it's okay. It's all right. Rob? Do you have any more water? Yeah. Good. There you go. Just that fast. There we go. <laughs> this is great, There's something Bob. about institutional, the systems, the, the air yeah, the systems. Yeah, it dries. Yeah. It just, yeah. This is great. This is a great conversation. This is Yeah, like, like I say, it's, it's, it's a, it's, are we at Tim Hortons or are we? Uh, yeah, this is great though. Like. But it's, it's hard to get any more specific. Yeah. What I really I mean, liked was the part about the lack of interest in politics. Yeah. And, and well, not, thank you. Not connecting. Water. Thank you. I don't mind if this door stays open. Well, I was going to ask people in now. Are there awesome. still people coming in now? There just was. That's why I showed. I don't know what it is about the system at, at Cambrian. I actually developed a lot of action from it because mm -hmm. it was so exacerbated. We're going to put her on, on the show, on the air here. So is this okay. uh, just launch that. Show her where we can. Yeah. You don't need to get on top of this so you can stay a little foot back. Okay. And you know what? If, if, if you could come closer to here with that. And I could bring well, this. Well, it depends how you want to fit. Like, that's I was, a good spot. It's just at the window, eh? Oh, fear of camera? Yeah. With the light? Oh, you don't have So to she can come over here. <laughs> Well, that's and up I can, to you, however you want. Sure. Can you come over here? Can you sit here? Sure. Okay. We're just going to have a three-way conversation here. All right. You're going to get my back. No, not necessarily. This will be good. I want to make sure I get you guys, so. Perfect, James. She's okay, good there? She's, she's yeah, good there? Yeah, well, she'll be turning and looking at you. 
Yeah, should be, yeah, no, this is good. It's it's just so that people can hear it. Do you fire it? Tech? Thank you very much. If we had the audio, I wouldn't have to. <laughs> it's just so they can hear the conversation. So that's good. I can I can see it. We can line you. What's your input sure. there? Eighth, one eighth on the audio? So one eighth in, if you put audio? Well, why I don't can, we yeah. just line you up? Well, I've got a tape now. I've already got For the future, tape. though. Where is your audio? Do you know? No. I'm not a techie. What? All we got to have to do is we can output right out of the desk here into your camera. Yeah, we can do that. Huh? I can see everybody. There you go. I'll just stand like, I'll sit like this. Yeah, because we're yeah. in a three-way. Yeah. It's not me that's the important one. So we're going, what, another 15? Another yeah. yeah. Nobody is it really. Is the hour that you're planning on stopping? Well, nobody really comes in at three, so we'll, oh, we'll go. So, so we'll go, like, I, this is your... Like how you guys want to look? Yeah, no, well, I think this is great. We're, like if, this is a great conversation. Like so. when, when you when you kind of, if you give me a second and a half, I start to speak. That's just my nature. Okay, yeah. So you're good. You, you, you don't leave any disconnect yeah. there, so yeah. it's good. So, but I don't know if I'm connecting. Well, whenever you want to, you want to stop, you just, you know, well, thank you for, you know, do your, your end I'm, spiel. I'm enjoying this because when this goes up, it goes up. Yeah. And, and so it's as long as it is. <laughs> Yep. No, it's up to you. Whenever okay, you good. want us out of here. So, what do you want to? What do you want to start with? Um, I want to start healthcare, or do you want to go back to? Uh, I'm just going to turn it over to you and basically say, is there anything? Well, well, I want to want... introduce Kareem. Yeah, we'll introduce you, and you want to start talking about the apathy, the political apathy, and or do you want to? Go yeah, right because so you had, you know, one of the topics you were recently discussing was that you, you people are just showing a lack of interest now in politics, and you're just not. The ones who have to be engaged are not engaged anymore. Well, that's a good start. Don't, go, don't, go, don't go too far. Stop. <laughs> that's where we're going. So, Kareem. And Jordan. I hope I don't have a call Jordan. Yeah. Kareem Jordan. Okay. So, Kareem is. Uh, she's the. She's my uh, communications director. I'm going to ask you to. I'm going to. Oh, you introduce to you, and oh, okay. I'm going to say, introduce us to Kareem. And you can. Uh, you can do it for me. Okay. Good. I want you to take this as a something that you can use in your campaign. Too. Yeah. This is this is absolutely awesome. And I sure hope Francis or somebody from her team is listening. She probably is because she was on Facebook and I just sent and a, a I thing sure back. Hope, to I sure hope we have an opportunity to sit down together and chat like this on your show. That would be amazing. Be nice. Uh, it really would be. It would we be probably have to time. invite all four parties. CRTC. Well, I know Mark is probably not going to show up. Um, I don't know who the Green Party, I think it's Sam, isn't it? But I don't know if he's actually got the nomination. Okay. So. Yeah, we should. We'll do it. Okay, we're on.